So, so firstly, um, we're going to start with the um, the agenda. Uh, my name is Morgan. Introducing myself a little bit, and I'm also talking about the lab I'm uh, be a part of, and and how do we using um, open source software to empower the scientists, engineers um, within the laboratory to um, advance the development here. And which one? How we use it? Okay, so uh, again, uh, we'll be talking about um, the agenda, and now we, next we're going to be talking about the rocket engineering pipeline. How do we assess our rocket scientists um, initiate type project from the mission definition to the mission operation? And as we're going to be talking about uh, Open Rocket, which is a simulation software that enables us to uh, customize feature functionality and also to um, enable us to run simulation faster. And also we are going to be talking about Cypher RTOS. It's a, a operating system already uh, being having a significant impact in our community and also Arduino cool and how both of them can be bringing uh, potential impact to the development. Uh, and also NASA open source and uh, what we have been doing personally as a, a contributor and how I uh, apply their software to helping us to um, make uh, impact along this way. So we also want to bring a little bit more on Google Summer Code, which is a gateway that can help you to access to this technology and also um, be able to be a part of the journey to space. So now let's get started. So my name is Mark, and I'm a computer science student here in Taiwan. Um, and also I am a evaluation engineer at Spec Technology Lab. Uh, which is um, a laboratory that's specializing in developing a sonic rocket. We're not developing a rocket that reaches orbit. We are developing a rocket that can help us to do some specific experiment um, in between the outer space and, and the sea level. So, and I'm also a open source contributor uh, of NASA Loma MCD project. It's a mission control uh, software that Basically, it's a web client that enable you to uh, enable you to run all kinds of some, uh, visualization for your mission. So that's is what I do currently. And also, we as a lab, we're going to partner with NSPO to um, to build the next frontier of our laboratory to utilizing the resources we have so far uh, with open source software to build the next big rocket. So there's a video, but it's a video. Video versions are not available right now, but if you're interesting, I can provide that later. Um, so first of all, we can be talking about the rocket development pipeline, which is a series of system engineering methodology that enables a laboratory to uh, build our 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 system. And we will start with the definition of the project, the definition of mission. Um, we need to define a specific mission profile, like the Apple G that we have, the total impulse, and also we need to understand the engineering specification that we need to accomplish. Um, beyond that, we need to design the structure, avionics, and propulsion system that will help us a lot. Um, 
and which is also setting a foundation for us. And as critically, we're going to start simulating our design to ensure it meet the mission requirement. Um, but simulation is expensive. Uh, especially for a lab like this, we don't have much funding. But if open source software can enable us to have much powerful software to simulate, uh, also able to examine the source code and customize the source code that fit our need, that would be a powerful thing that we can do to advance our research. And now in the implement, within the FVL team, we have all kinds of open source projects are going on to helping us uh, build this kind of stuff. And also verification and validation and launch operation and post-mission analysis. And launch operation is mainly about mission control. Um, it's about how you coordinate people from all different domains to get to do a mission that is safety critical and also time sensitive. Um, so I'm going to talk about Open Rocket, which is at the beginning of the time pipeline. Open Rocket is a fly simulator or a kind of simulation engine that enables you to simulate a sounding rocket with ease. How easy it is. Um, basically, the freshman year, uh, I already can be able to build, I'm uh, not build, uh, build a rocket engine, uh, uh, build a rocket simulation upon open rocket. So it's very easy friendly, and it has at least somewhat accurate uh, aerospace, uh, aerodynamic model that enable you to do a simulation. But in the future, we also want to advance software in order to meet the higher standard. So, how do we, uh, as a team, be benefit about well, benefit from this software? Um, risk of friendly is obvious. Um, we also be benefit from its community-driven uh, community design and community-driven support. Um, open source software enables us to widen the reach of the entire uh, community ecosystem. So that if we are diving to a specific niche um, and topic that we wanted to uh, develop, um, but we don't have much of experience in it, community-driven uh, support can help us to be the back of our team. And also, one of the key features that I think is one of the most important thing that in already helping us to develop a sonic rocket that can reach uh, kilometers is the constant, uh, we are be able to uh, customize the functionality. Uh, that's really important because um, we need to fit the needs we have so far, the fit the design we need we have so far, and a model that we, uh, we we wanted to build with open source software. Uh, it's really hard for us to do it in, commer in the commercial software, but it's much easier for us to do it in open source software. And also. Like one of the famous example we have today is like if a professor is asking you, yeah, what's the behind the scene of NCS software? It's very hard to answer, right? It's hard to answer. It's like, what's the behind the scene of a meta software? Well, it's too difficult. But if you are able to have some sort of uh, software engineering skill and this kind of experience, then you will be able to answer what's the behind the scene of Open Rocket because it, all of the formula, all of the model that is one upon this simulator is open source. So that's one advantage that we can take it. Um, the next is implementation. Well, uh, once we have the design and what simulated uh, already fitting our need, we're going to build our NVLA system. Uh, in the past, we used Arduino platform to build entire system from the ground up. Um, but since our mission is getting getting more rigorous, we need to uh, build a system with a real-time operating system. Real-time operating system is able to us uh, to take a full advantage of high-end embedded chip to uh, a fancy system, but we don't have to, to design the entire system from the ground up. For example, uh, uh, the communication integration. How do we integrate uh, different protocols? How do we uh, integrate all kinds of sensors that, that need to run upon our avionics. Well, we have RTO has already have uh, extensive design and support for all kinds of sensors 
as well as uh, like a communication protocol like UART, uh, I squared C, SPI, and so forth. So now we're going to take about talking about the mission operation, and that's something that I wanted to stress on, which is um, NASA Open Source Project. Uh, is is a huge thing. It's a big stuff because it provides implication for us here scientists and entire industry. Because it, in the past, like modern rocketry or um, aerospace industry is relatively a uh, closed community. So HAR um, is having this uh, low accessibility. It's hard for us to, as a student or as academic, to be able to access to that field. It's really hard for us to do that. But, but with NASA's open source software, we can take advantage of the existing copies that the developer divided for NASA and be able to utilize this uh, maturity within in order to build the software and system upon of the entire platform. An example that we have is uh, is so-called NASA's open source open mission uh, open uh, sorry NASA's open source mission control technologies is is one of the most famous uh, uh, open source project within NASA. Um, entire system is built upon of JavaScript and the field framework this day. And this framework enable you to build a fully supported telemetry mission, uh, telemetry system and mission control software directly from this framework. And that's powerful because we don't need to do this from scratch. But we can extend the functionality with that framework. Because it's generalization, highly generalized design, we are be able to take advantage of that. Uh, so uh, I'm going to share with you our laboratory, what we are doing right now uh, using this uh, technology to prepare for our next mission. Our next mission is design uh, software is scheduled in the October. And our combination as well, we have two missions. One is in October this year, and one is uh, happening next year. And we were using this technology to do mission control and going to demonstrate a little bit uh, how do we uh, take advantage of NASA open source software to do that. And here is our code base. Um, uh, the system is called Stargazer. Uh, it's our mission, co uh, mission control software uh, or a ground, ground station software. Um, and now I'm going to uh, take you a tour on what is NASA's open mission control. Uh, it basically is uh, the dashboard of NASA at Open City, um, and it's fully open source, and you can take advantage of that immediately. Uh, you have all kind of functionality that you you are be able to customize. The entire visualization kit that you be uh, that's required for mission control uh, is already built in. And for example, that uh, JPL Jet Proportion Laboratory in NASA are reusing this. Uh, for all kinds of mission, like rover, Mars rover, 2020, like Perseverance rover, uh, and this helicopter mission. So for example, this is the demonstration of, of a laboratory's mission control system. Uh, we currently don't have any telemetry data coming in, but in the future, in the rock, uh, during the rocket launch, we will have uh, four telemetry data coming in from acceleration, altitude, uh, orientation, and so forth. And we have clock, mission coming down, and so forth, and that's it's very really powerful. And we also can customize this software to uh, conduct launch operation. We can direct click the button and uh, enter the control command, and we launch the rocket. That's something that we are looking forward to. Um, and so, also we can uh, take a look at the uh, who is using the open city? Yes, it's widely adopted in NASA. Uh, there's all kinds of missions like Mars 2022, uh, Mars rover, lunar rover. It's using open city to do mission control and it supports real time in operation with red socket protocol. So it's very really powerful, and you can try that if you have any uh, like front end or back end development experience in JavaScript. And now. Um, Especially what we are doing here uh, at a laboratory, 
And uh, let me move back a little bit. And now I'm going to talk about Google Summer Code. Uh, uh, the previous speaker obviously already uh, talking about the application of this uh, program, but this is a gateway that I wanted to bring you to the table. It's about um, a program that can help you to devote all kinds of software we already in, uh, we already be using for our launch mission. And so why is quite um, why is Google Summer of Code? It's obvious we already talking about that. But we want to talk about why this kind of program can help us to contribute that. I'm gonna give you an example of what we are um, where we are being very interesting in is uh, where is no no okay all oh, right here so um, cyber RTRs is relatively difficult for air aerospace engineers students which are the majority of uh, participants within our laboratory but they basically they all know how to write software in Arduino uh, embedded system in Arduino but uh, we need to take advantage of real-time operation, like the multi-thread uh, coding and programming. But so that's why we are really interested in this software because um, we are be able to uh, take advantage of this uh, system to have API in between uh, the user, a uh, developer, and the powerful RTOS behind the scene. So we have the Cypher audio and also having a Arduino code. And we can use Arduino API directly uh, while also taking advantage of RTOS operation. So that's something that we are looking for. That's something we're expecting in this community in order to help us to, as a laboratory to advance the entire uh, development within. So, so now, yeah. So to summarize that, how do open source software and community can, can help us as a rocket scientist to build rocket? Well, I would say transparency is important because we get be able to see the behind the scenes principle. Openness, bring community and user to help us to access to this software or tools that is basically impossible in the past. Uh, community driven provide huge amount of support for us to do the entire development. And so for you as a software developer, as a open source contributor, if you wanted to control software, yeah, we are welcome. But beyond that, we also wanted to have more user friendly documentation and data. Open source is not just about software. Open source is about data, open source. It's about tool and solution that open to the world uh, and able to utilize with the power of the community. So in the end, I'm uh, going to end this presentation here. Is invitation. Well, uh, fewer people are able to go to the moon, and fewer people are able to go to the ISS, go to the space station. But you, as a software engineer, you are be able to contribute to this community that bring your code to space. For example, if you are a contributor of F Prime, which is the fundamental software framework for Mars helicopter then you will be able to directly contribute to the software that already operated on Mars. So this really powerful thing that is impossible like two or three decades ago, but it is a reality today. So thank you very much for your participation. And today, we are welcome off the domain together to be a part of mission to space and beyond. Thank you. got um, like four minutes. Uh, so if you guys have any question or any comments about the presentation, feel free to bring it up so I can be able to answer you guys' uh, question. Yeah. Do you guys have any? Or I can also bring some of the sample here. Nope. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, so um, I can show you here. 
our lab is named um, The lab I'm in within is under the aerospace department in Tanka University, Danjiang Dashi. And we build rockets like this. Fully um, designed, developed, engineered by students and faculty members. And we, one of the managers we have, uh, one of the unique uniqueness we have is we use carbon fiber, like a rocket lab, <laughs> to build the comp uh, to, to Use it as a composite for our rocket, so it's fully, like, fully packed with uh, carbon composite. And we have several launch mission that have already been done. Like, yes, yes, uh, last year we have a launch mission in December. Um, we also aim to have a launch mission in this October. And we have contract with an SPO to build a civilian um, Sony rocket that. Uh, it's actually promoting the development of talents within Taiwan in space domain, also promoting research in space. So, um, like, not every country in the world can build Falcon 9 rocket, but we believe that everyone in the world can be able to somewhat participate in this, in this domain, that we can uh, actually benefit things on Earth. Yeah. So, like, for example, the research we are conducting it's mainly about vibration, uh, the vibration analysis, of vibration mitigation, and uh, if we can find some of solution or rocket that can benefit not just the vehicle itself, launch vehicle itself, but also a lot of um, other challenges that we had on Earth. So as late as uh, overall, it's a positive feedback, uh, as a uh, positive outcome for for all to 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 do this kind of stuff. Yeah. So, um, guys, I'm not sure if that can answer your question. Yeah. So that's basically what we do. And um, yeah. And this, yeah, it's actually machine control software. Yeah. And um, we wanted to, one of the objectives we have is to expanding the laboratory in order to not just build bigger rocket, but also promote this community. So that's why we are, actually, <laughs> if you guys are interested, uh, we, we wanted to have some collaboration with other domains in, in order to promote this, uh, this field in Taiwan. Because it's a relative uh, niche in Taiwan to build this kind of stuff. Basically, only three organizations in Taiwan are able to build this. One is in uh, Chenda, uh, one is in, in Jiaoda, uh, Yaming Jiaoda, yeah. So, um, and another one is Danjiang. Okay. So, and fourth, actually, is a coming up team that's really building this stuff, but they haven't had any launch experience yet. It's uh, Fengjia, Fengjia Hantai, yeah. There are four, we are four uh, civilian a uh, player <laughs> within this game in Taiwan. Yeah, also, yeah. So we also benefit a lot from, oh, at least from my side, benefit from NASA, benefit from UC Berkeley, the open source software that their team open source their FNI system to um, be an inspiration for us to do this kind of stuff. So a lot of top scores in the world today are already doing this and are already have a deep impact within their community and global community as well. So UC Berkeley, MIT, um, and Stanford, they are doing this a lot, yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, is, uh, do you know his name? The no, 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 I'm actually, um, I'm a, I'm an uh, upcoming junior. Uh, in the bachelor program. I joined this laboratory last year and sent sent actually in summer in the summer break. Um, I I started a software to contribute my experience in computer science because they do need a lot of software to build the functional rocket because this day a lot of stuff are software driven, like the deployment of uh, of parachute. 
launch control and software are built upon control system and software engineer. So that's what I'm being playing the unique role within. And I'm the only one <laughs> in the lab that is not aerospace engineering department. So, um, but we want to have a more um, talents that is not aerospace engineering, like the ECS, like uh, electronics, or even communication, or even business that are helping us a lot in terms of the development of rocket and also administration as well. Yeah, this is because, uh, like I say, uh, often uh, rocket science is it's not a particular field. It's not a discipline. It's a collective effort of people from all domain to build something that is impossible in the past, but is reality in, to, in uh, tomorrow. So that's basically the belief we have in the lab, and also uh, I believe the community around the world that doing the similar thing, having the same face in that. Yeah. So I'm actually a junior student next year, uh, or junior year next semester. I'm um, also looking forward to what is happening in the community in Taiwan. Yeah. So, yeah, that's that's basically what I'm doing right now. <laughs> this is my GitHub. Okay, and glad all of you having like spending 30 minutes to be a part of this story, and I'm glad to. Sure, what I am doing for the past years. Um, yes, it's been an amazing journey. And uh, thank you very much for listening. And uh, we'll see you probably somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> see you.